Hello and welcome to another episode of AAU Talks, the voice of higher education in Africa. And my name is Ajaman Otredakum. I'm glad to be sharing this moment with you because today I have with me a distinguished guest representing the West African Science Service Center on climate change and adaptable land use. And he will be helping us understand the whole purpose and vision of Waska for Africa. And I believe you will enjoy this interview. Don't go anywhere. We'll go for a quick break. When we come back, I'll let you know who our guest is and what we have for you today. Don't go anywhere. You welcome back to AAU Talks, the voice of higher education in Africa. And as I said before, we went for the break that we have in our house, a very distinguished guest representing Waskow. And I'm so glad to be introducing to you, Dr. Mumuni Sabadogo. Doc, you're welcome to Africa, uh, AAU Talks. Thank you very much. Doc, you know, initially, I was trying to tell you about WASCA, the West African Science Service Center on um, Climate Change and Adaptable Land Use. That is a whole lot of work in there. So help us understand, what is WASCA about and what is your main objective? Oh, thank you very much, Ajiman. And um, let's, uh, before I go further sure. and explain to you about Waska, uh, let me thank you and thank AAU for giving us this opportunity uh, to interact today. Uh, I'm very glad to be here. So with regard to Waska, as you mentioned, um, you know, since the um, Conference of Parties of the UNFCCC, that was uh, the 13th conference, uh, people started to realize that we have enormous gap yeah. when it comes to the scientific contributions uh, to uh, climate action. Yeah. So in particular, when we look at some of the corners in terms of uh, higher education to give expertise uh, to uh, the different uh, component or entities to be able to really take appropriate actions. And then also on the research side and on climate services side, there were gaps. And then based on that, uh, it, was, it has been recommended that we, uh, if the international community can really cooperate and make sure that we have uh, international centers uh, tailored for specific regions where the need is to help in this purpose. So going along, uh, Germany uh, supported 10 West African countries okay. uh, to start thinking about establishing a specialized center who can really uh, deal with it, uh, that matter, and come out with uh, some uh, strong focus areas uh, to meet the real needs of West African uh, policy making and also practitioners and also uh, all the communities on climate action. That's how the idea started. In 2009, this idea germinated and started having flesh. In 2010, then the flesh kept growing. And then we started establishing uh, some key stakeholders, identifying and preparing the sin so that we can have that institution uh, West Africa deserves. So, in doing so, Germany supported the establishment of two institutions in Africa, centers. One in Southern Africa and one in Western Africa. So the Western Africa one is Waska. And then the Southern Africa one is Saska. Today I will be focusing on Waska. So, and then going forward, uh, the 10 countries backed by ECOWAS and Germany have been able to officially uh, finalized the constitution of, a, of, the, of it in 2012. It has been signed by all these 10 African countries. And a cooperation agreement has been signed between this institution and Germany to support the establishment and the operationalization of the center. That's how it started. So nearly uh, by next year, we'll be celebrating our 10th anniversary. Uh, and that is going to be also really uh, an important moment. And I believe we'll have time uh, to also talk about it. But for today, the, the main purpose of WASCAR is embedded even in the name. 
You see, we're providing climate services. It's about climate, uh, science services. It's about science services on climate change and adapted land use. So it means that we want to bridge the gap in terms of scientific services to our region. This entails what? First, scientific uh, capacity is about human resources. And you know, we need to build expertise. We need to build young generation of high caliber of scientists on climate change to be able to make the difference and bring inputs of high relevance and excellence to policy making and to actions. So this is one area of it. So what do we do? We build first equipment infrastructure and then we also provide teaching and education facilities to host universities. So by establishing 10 graduate schools to start with, it was at the beginning 2013, it was six PhD programs and four master programs. And these ones are specifically tailored for climate change and our issues, development sector issues that are really where we are missing really expertise. So some of those, I will come back to details, yes. but this is one aspect on higher education to have high caliber scientists, young scientists to take charge of the climate change issues across the region. So each program is a regional program. It means that each program is hosting all, all students coming from all the 10 member countries. Right now we are 11 member countries. So the four remaining ECOWAS member countries are just preparing steps to join WASCA so that we can cover fully the entire one. So this is higher education component and we have also the research component sure. because we need to provide, as I said, scientific information and knowledge that are tailored for policymakers and communities. Yeah. And there we have established what we call a competence center based in Ouagadougou, is a regional competence center where we have a pool of scientists in various um, topics. Uh, the key areas we are having now, there are five area, key areas of research. I'll come back to this one too. Sure. So this is the second pillar of Oscar. And the third pillar of Oscar is how do we translate all the research uh, uh, results? How do we translate all the, the expertise. How do we translate all the facilities we are having, uh, the data we are gathering, how do we translate them into something that is accessible, easily to policymakers, easily to communities, easily to practitioners? How do we do that? We need to package them into something that is accessible. And we do that through providing climate and environmental services through the Competence Center in Wakadu. So Competence Center is doing first research, high relevant and excellent research. Then they have the data management component and then the climate services provision component to make all those information available to our stakeholders. So these are the three main focus in terms of science service we are providing on climate change and adaptive land use across the region. That's an incredible set of work you're doing right now um, with your competence services. And I really want to look at that second pillar. Uh, how much partnership have you been able to create by so far, being almost a decade of being in prison? Because we find climate change is a very top priority issue. So many people are interested in government industry. How well have you been able to rope in industry to your course? Well, this is uh, something that uh, is very important, you know, um, we have a number of institutions doing well in providing their own services to, to the larger communities. Yeah. And uh, what WASCAL do is to complement and to bridge gaps for this one. So in particular, we are collaborating with uh, the national uh, institutions because we believe that we need to take charge of national needs what the needs of the government, what the needs of other stakeholders in the countries. So we have strong partnership 
at national level. We have also a strong partnership at the regional level, where we, of course, have very strong relations with ECOWAS, uh, including the Swiss satellite agencies of, of ECOWAS, uh, for example, the ECOWAS uh, Center Agency in charge of uh, renewable energy, energy efficiency, because you know this is a very good and uh, important sector that can help us go very quickly to smart climate smart solutions, for example. And we are partnering also with uh, other uh, financial institutions like the EBIT, that's the ECOWAS Bank for Development and um, investment and development with DOADA to West African Development Bank and so on. And then uh, with other, of course, uh, financial partners to bring here yeah, the capacity also they needed and concepts and ideas that can be used to foster our contribution as a region uh, to accessing to climate funds. They are important, financing is important, but you need brilliant ideas, you need research, you need baseline data to make sure that the proposals you will be preparing to access to those funds are really appropriate and get you access to them. So we're working with them to do that. And what we do also through renewable energy, for example, is to bring possibilities of platforms where you have scientists, private sector, and then, of course, development sector actors together bring them into technology development that can fit the purpose and build business models for, so for the uh, um, private sector uh, community to be able to then take it forward. Because when you develop technology that is adapted and then you are able to develop business model going along with this technology, then it's easy for private sector to come in because they are a part of the development of the yeah. technology, all the process, and then they know what it's the scope of it, they can easily take it because it will be effective for them, it will be remunerative for them, and at the same time, they contribute to the quota of reducing green gas emissions and then also increasing the adaptive capacity of communities. So this is something we are really partnering. And of course, we partner at the international level because the scientific information and knowledge we generate through Waskal activities had to be taken into account by our negotiators when they go to international negotiation. They need to be backed by right information, by good information. And IPCC is doing a very great job. And what we are doing is that to have information publications that can be fed into the process of IPCC and make it really available to decision makings. And we also prepare negotiators. When you are invited for, for example, by ECOWAS, when they are preparing our African, West African negotiators to go to these negotiations, then we can inform them about state of heart, for example, model prediction models results for them to understand the future, the near future, and mid-term and long-term future of climate change, so that they can be prepared when they negotiate to have something that really can be uh, of good importance and good impact for the region. So we do, at international level, we have connections at international level. We have very strong connections with Germany. Uh, that's because also Germany is supporting us since the beginning. So they gave us opportunity to cooperate with number of research institutions, for private sector people, and then for universities. So we are very thankful to Germany for all these possibilities of connecting people. Uh, for example, to give you an idea, we have more than 300 professors okay. and researchers mm -hmm. that are contributing to supervise our PhD and master students across the region. This is massive. And Germany opened uh, its research centers and universities to host our students for six months. They stay there, giving them international exposure, giving them opportunities to connect, and then giving them state-of-art information that can be useful. When they come back, they are really trained at international standard level. And this is something that will, you know, the best investment you can do exactly. is to invest in human beings is to invest in human resources. If you do, transformation will come. 
because transformation starts by human capacity. And that is what we are tackling in terms of higher education, in terms of research equipment, and also uh, capacity development so that our scientists can be really acquainted with some of the instruments we have, like high computing systems, so that they can develop tailored models and then make sure that on services provision, climate service provision, you know, is something that we have as concept, usually we talk about it, and when it comes to delivering them effectively on the ground, sometimes you attack because we need tools, we need skills, we need capacity to be effective to that. And uh, really, uh, in that corner, we are trying to push it a bit so that uh, at least we can be able to uh, respond to the need, uh, express, by our stakeholders, by our country members. So I really wanted to find out more about the issue about adaptability of the technology in Africa. We know we have issues, but before we do that, we'll go for a quick pause. Uh, we'll be right back with more information on Waskal and the challenges they are facing in their operations in Africa. Don't go anywhere. you welcome back to AAU Talks, the voice of higher education in Africa, and we are committed to inform, to transform, and today we're having the Executive Director for the West African Science Service Center on Climate Change and Adaptable Land Use with Namest, Dr. Momoni Savadogo. Doc, uh, we're right back, and we're glad you joined us. We were talking about uh, the challenges we're facing. You know, there is a very novel, a, quite, a very novel and critical role you're playing in Africa with regards to climate change. We have issues with climate change in Africa. Lots of people think that the ozone layer in Africa is depleted because we feel so bad about things and we emit so much of these uh, gases. But in your operation, um, how do you find Africa complementing what you do? Has it been easy or quite cumbersome? Uh, well, I think that um, in terms of um, sensitization, people are now really aware about climate change, okay. at least broadly. Mm. Um, that is, is something that we all need okay, uh, to join efforts, to combat it, and then to maintain and improve the livelihood mm. of everybody. Okay. So we need them to be very well prepared. We all know also uh, that in terms of green gas emissions, the quota of Africa is really minimal. Yeah. But you know, environment is, cannot be in silos. We are all in the global world. Mm. So the impact is global. Sure. The impact is also local. Yeah. So it's a global phenomenon with local effect okay that's why we need to find solutions at least to improve the adaptive capacity of all the sectors yeah we need to mainstream it across all sectors and that's why if in our human resources capacity building mm -hmm. what we do for example in terms of higher education mm -hmm. right now we are covering uh, uh, 13 13, 13 topics okay. related to climate change All right. in West Africa. Okay. So we cover uh, the topic climate change mm -hmm. um, in terms of climate understanding the climate systems mm -hmm. in West Africa. Yeah. Then we cover climate change in agriculture mm -hmm. so that we can at least make sure that we are mainstream smart solutions yeah. into our agricultural and farming systems. Mm. We do climate change in economies hosted by one university, yeah. that's the University of Dakar. All the programs I'm talking about now, higher education, they are hosted by our member countries. Mm. So each member country is hosting at least one program. Okay. And all those programs are regional. As I explained earlier, yeah. they are receiving, we enroll students from all West Africa, okay. our member countries. So this is one thing. So I was talking about then uh, climate systems, climate change in agriculture, climate change in it and uh, economy. We have climate change in education because we believe that is very important mm. to have young scientists that can deal with education component so that people can be well educated about climate change, well informed about climate change, mm. and having experts that can convey that message yeah. throughout all the space mm. of the communities 
uh, from regional to local ones is important. So we have a PhD program specifically on that one. Mm -hmm. And it, it also, of course, uh, covers communication issues. Sure. So <laughs> you can be also interested in it. Yeah. But it's something that we are having at the University of the Gambia, Banjul, oh, okay. and it's very important. We have also climate change and water resources. All right. Because it's important to link it up. Mm -hmm. Climate change and uh, disaster risk management. How do we tackle that, that one? Mm -hmm. We have it in a PhD program. Uh, we also have climate change in biodiversity mm -hmm. because it's very well connected. Yeah. Uh, climate change and land use okay. here at Ken UST. Mm -hmm. We are hosted by Ken UST in Ghana. Sure. Or we have in Nigeria, for example, climate change and human habitat. How do you see how the connection we are having with, with, with this there? Mm -hmm. And then we have climate change in marine science. Okay. That is a master program in Cape Verde, hosted by Cape Verde. And really, with international connections, that's mm -hmm. really something that will fill a huge gap because we are, we are missing completely uh, this connection between yeah. climate change. Of course, internationally, we we do have some research, but when it comes to Western Africa, we are lagging behind in terms of expertise and um, scientific uh, knowledge about it. Yeah. So this uh, program, the master program, will help really fill that gap. Mm -hmm. And then we have climate change and informatics. How do we handle data? How do we collect them, assess them, manage them, have infrastructure that we can host our own data and manage them very well? Mm -hmm. In this one, we have a master program okay. hosted by University of Ouagadougou, for example, mm -hmm. which is covering this one. And, of course, climate change in energy mm -hmm. is very key, as I explained to you. And right now, we are launching, just launched, uh, another master program that will be hosted by four universities. There are four master programs on green hydrogen technology. Great. It means we are covering the evolution, entire evolution of green hydrogen technology exactly. in four locations uh, in, in West Africa. And all of them will be recruiting uh, 60 mm -hmm. at first batch students. Mm -hmm. All the students we are recruiting up to now, thanks to our funders, are all fully they get full scholarship, okay. fully supported Great. by the program. Because we believe that is a sector where we need to push exactly. things to go really, very, very fast. And the target is to hit 1,000 students very soon. Sure. Within five years, we sure. want to, to, to t hit that target. Sure. Right now, we have uh, uh, about two, uh, 200, 262 graduates. Mm -hmm. And then we have more than 200 really enrolled right now. Mm -hmm. And then we are also recruiting very, this year, we will be recruiting about eight, uh, uh, 180 something. Oh, that's students. an applaudable achievement right there. Yes, and then giving them full scholarship Great. Uh, to make sure that at least we get very good graduates, very uh, high caliber graduates there. Great. So I would like to thank all the universities, you know, uh, the uh, presidents, the rectors, the uh, vice chancellors, mm -hmm. all of them that they are partnering with us in this great program. Mm -hmm. And we are so uh, grateful to them. We are grateful to all the lecturers. I told you more than 200 lecturers involved in this program. Sure. And sure. then, of course, I told you also about the number of people involved in re just um, uh, making sure that our students get uh, to be well um, managed, supervised to get very good training. And can, you can imagine, mm -hmm. if you have five, if you sum all of these, yeah. then, I mean, by end of this year, we'll be having uh, either those already graduated mm -hmm. or enrolled newly, mm -hmm. more than 500 students. Great. All specialized, in, with average, average, we'll be going to be average 50 students per member country in all the 13 areas of climate change related issues I, I was mentioning. And this is massive. Those already graduated are already working. They are all employed, all doing well in, at international sphere, mm -hmm. but international connected, of course, to West Africa because mm -hmm. we want them to serve West Africa. Yeah. That's our, our hope, and that's why we have trained them. And they are doing well in the national government uh, agencies, doing well in NGOs, and everywhere we get really, and very well connected because they really do, uh, are happy with what they learn, and yeah. they join 
come together under what you call alumni network programs. They are very well organized, very dynamic. Really, you can, if you pop up just in our website, mm -hmm. you will see number of publications coming from them, coming from our social media. You go there, you will see Great. massive. So, Great. But is not enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you look at the importance of the issue mm -hmm. for this region, we want to have really to push more. Mm -hmm. And ambition is for us to be really providing uh, yeah, more to meet the needs. Because we are in relation with stakeholders, national um, um, stakeholders, and we know the need. Mm -hmm. And we keep having developing initiative with them. And our call, of course, is for us uh, with AAU, we are really proud mm -hmm. to be joining uh, AAU because sure. this is important. Yeah. We would like to bring in this specific um, component, this specific mandate we are having into this uh, partnership mm -hmm. so that we can together join us, call more support to the programs we are developing so that we can hit the target. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is something that our heart beating for, we are passionate for, yeah. because we know if you are able to have scientific knowledge, mm -hmm. scientific information, mm -hmm. scientifically acquainted human resources, yeah. we know that we are able to generate smart solutions for this region. Yes. And by generating smart solutions, we'll be able to transform lives. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to really help communities to adapt very well because they will be very informed, they will have good tools, they will have also good perspective and good backing from stakeholders so that they can together make sure that our countries plan and implement very good programs mm -hmm. related to climate change. Yeah. That's our message and uh, we are really proud to be uh, partnering and with all the, our partners we are having across now mm -hmm. and we are of course open and calling for more partnership mm -hmm. because we need that is true only through partnership that we can be able to make difference yeah it's time to make transformation I see and we need to push it forward you know i wanted to find out from you um what's from your point as wascal finding higher education the contribution um you've done a whole lot of work by connecting these institutions with programs that are going to change the african continent but what more do you expect from african higher education institutions in supporting the vision of wascal um we need with higher education institution uh, to at least those who are already partnering with us. We need to do more in terms of um, having right, more support to, this to the programs mm -hmm. we are on ground. Okay. We together, we have a common vision. Together, we have been able to build the programs. Mm -hmm. Together, we have been able to run it. Mm -hmm. National institution lead universities, they have, we have provided a number of facilities to the program. Yeah. Uh, this is in-kind contribution they make to the programs. Mm -hmm. They provided personnel, yeah. uh, some the directors and deputy directors, they have been provided by some of the Irish universities, supported by the program, of mm -hmm. course, but they are from the, these universities. But I think, this now is time that we need, okay, to go into kind of sustainability of these programs. Okay. Meaning that our funder have been able to support us till now. Yeah. But I think as Africans, we need to join effort so that we can generate our own possibilities mm. of supporting those programs. Okay. Uh, although, of course, we build our capacity to be able to access to uh, global climate funds, mm. but it's important that our stakeholders, our governments also, really, they are supporting because they are part of it. They are also contributing financially and in kind. But I think we need to take it more further in, 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 in this one so that we can build more sustainability of this program. And we believe because we discuss with them, yeah. uh, we are all um, ready, they are all ready to do that. And we are really glad for that because then we can make further input to the system. Because as I told you, through, uh, since uh, 2013 yeah. to now, you have been able to have 500 students yeah. 
I mean, 200, roughly 300 graduated and the orders coming. But, I mean, the rhythm, in our opinion, is still uh, to be densified. Okay? That's one. But also to be uh, diversified. Yeah. Because as we build a <laughs> high caliber scientist sure. capacity, mm -hmm. we need some other expertise. Yeah. Okay, you know, the in service trainings we are organizing mm -hmm. uh, so that we can also help some of the workers already in the field working at uh, with some level to have also expertise so that they can, it's not just about a uh, high caliber scientist but uh, about all the education evolution, mm -hmm. how the T, uh, the T vet systems, mm -hmm. how we bring it in yeah. to develop further. Uh, our capacities on technology developments that will help to adaptation into mitigation to climate change. Mm -hmm. All those are, for example, weather stations we are for, for data collection, for example. Um, we support it through the funding of our partners, uh, countries to get uh, complementary uh, weather station, yeah. automated weather station okay. that generate uh, weather data uh, uh, just uh, remotely and automatically. Mm -hmm. And they are collected by the national med services that are there and also collected to our regional data center management mm -hmm. in Wakadugu to collect it. And then we have e-platform. We are developed and very soon will be open access to people. Mm -hmm. People can just uh, connect, zoom in, and then they'll see all the data we are having. 50 stations have been installed to complement what exists already on the ground. Mm -hmm. And then help countries to have of course, uh, data, historical data, that's one is about what exists, but we can start building uh, new infrastructure that can help us at least uh, to fill the gaps we have seen on the historical data so that in the future we have data at least we can use uh, to calib calibre our, our, and make sure that our models mm -hmm. are also well proof okay. with data in situ data we are having okay. and we built a number of uh, automatic stations across uh, sub uh, basins three sub basins in west africa okay. where we put uh, weather stations since 2012 mm -hmm. so these data are there collected and then can be accessed by our stakeholders mm -hmm. where we have not only weather weather uh, data but we do have also uh, environmental data, mm. data on soil, data on water, data on uh, etc. Connected on automatic, uh, automatically and generated and then uh, cross-checked uh, for quality okay. and then uh, collected and then made available to our stakeholders. So okay. these are uh, areas where I think we can continue to densify okay. these facilities. We can continue to diversify. Mm -hmm. Uh, the development of expertise and human capacities, mm -hmm. and then we can continue uh, to make sure that we train people also on high computing systems. Okay. We have that at the competence center. Some countries do have it, but we network, and we want people, especially our scientists, to make sure that they can use it because it's available massive. and to generate information massive, for countries. Massive, massive, massive. I must say that you did a great job, you and your team at Waskow, and I can see you tap into the vision of the Africa we want one day. And we all look ahead that Waska will really contribute its massive quota to the Africa we want. That is where time permits us on AAU Talks. And it's been a great time having you, Dr. Mamuni, with us and telling us the vision of Waska and what you do. And now the, we've been quantitized. We now know what you're doing. And we now know how we can also contribute our part to support you, have a great time with you. So, um, Thank you very much for the time spent with us on this show, and we believe that on subsequent times, uh, subsequent times, we'll have time with you on, on the set to see the development, your innovativeness, and also your contributions also to the cause and also your partnerships. Um, have a nice day on AU Talks, and see you next time. Bye. <laughs>